Hey Balancers and welcome to another episode of the Balance Theory Podcast. We're going to have some fun today in the topic that is very close to my heart at the moment. We're going to be talking about how your self-worth dictates the opportunities or experiences you get in life. Now make sure you stick around until the end because I'm going to give you all a personal challenge from me to you that's related to this topic that I've been doing on myself that I think has really elevated my sense of self-worth and by virtue, the kind of opportunities I'm getting in life. So that will be right at the end. But just before we dive in, if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe on your streaming platform, whether that be YouTube, Spotify podcasts, Apple podcasts, or anywhere else, make sure you hit the subscribe button just so you don't miss any future episodes. And it also really helps us out in reaching new podcast listeners too. Also, for those of you that are interested in joining our five week free podcast marathon, basically I've put together an ebook, which is aimed to help you get to know yourself better. So if you're feeling a bit lost, if you want to reconnect with yourself, if you want to just get to know yourself a little bit better, go under the hood, see what's going on and just see where you're sitting at this moment in your life, then this free five week challenge is going to be perfect for you. I have split up uh, and themed episodes for a podcast a day for five weeks straight. And we focus on things like mindset, how to clear the crap, how to understand yourself and the way you think a little better. And then we've got some episodes in there to just level it all up, to take it to the next level. So the link to the free eBooks in the show notes below, and you can totally do it at your own pace when you guys are ready. There's no formal start, stop date. It's just a resource there for you to use and come back to whenever you want a little bit of a freshen up to reconnect with yourself. So today's topic has really been born out of the experience I've been having in the last few months. So I have been extremely, extremely focused and dedicated to my own self-worth. You guys would probably have guessed that from the theme of topics I've been talking about from different ways to look at your success, from how to measure your productivity, how to bolster your sense of self-worth and understand what that means. All these topics for me have been a personal pursuit and something I've been working on to really strengthen my self-worth, to break down some of the old ways I had of thinking about my value, right? Like when I'm valuable and when I'm not. That's been something I've been trying to unpick for a very long time. And I think for a lot of you listening as high performer mentalities or type A, your worth often gets thrown into the category of when you when you have good output, when you do things, when you get the numbers, you know, those kind of measurable metrics often reflect back at us our self-worth. But when we really go deep into the true meaning of self-worth, when we really find that authentic, beautiful connection with who we are and what makes us valuable and our self-worth increases, it is almost magical what ends up happening around you. And I am a strong believer, and this might be a little bit spiritual or woo-woo for some of you guys, but hang in with me here. I'm a big believer that the opportunities that are presented to you are a direct correlation of your self-worth. So put it this way, if you have a very low self-worth, you're not going to be putting yourself out there for situations, whether it be jobs, relationships, opportunities, because you don't think you're worthy of them. Versus if you have a very elevated sense of self-worth, if it's an authentic, genuine, beneath the surface type level of self-worth, you're going to be putting yourself out there and exposing yourself to these kinds of opportunities, going for them and actually embracing them because you think you're worthy of them. So I think this is super interesting to think about because I have gone through moments where I have felt like I'm flatlining a little bit, right? Like a bit meh. And when I think about those times or when I can feel myself going through those times, it's so crazy to think that the opportunities that are reflected back at me in those moments are also a bit meh, you know, like not really much going on. But when I shift into this energy of really knowing my value, of trusting myself, the things that pop up, it's almost like, where did all this come from? It feels a little bit serendipitous, but I truly, truly can say that in my own experience, in my own life, I can see the correlation. And the reason I wanted to share this with you guys today is because if you feel a little stagnant, if you feel like there's not much happening, I think reverse engineer that and start thinking about how do you see yourself? How do you see your self-worth? What are you deserving of? What are you capable of? What is your potential? How do you see and view all those things? Because then the opportunities that you are presented with are going to be reflective of that. So if you're a bit stuck at that opportunity piece, go backwards, look at the self-worth 
And honestly, it's just, I just can't, like it's insane what happens when you really start to focus on your own self-worth and the direct correlation that has with things that happen outside of you. But I think there's a power and there's like a snowball effect. So the more you do this consistently, the stronger it gets, the longer you can maintain it. And of course, I want to fully say that this is not like I have um, no bad days. You know, I never doubt myself. Like, of course, I go through those things. I'm a human. I'm natural, especially I'm putting myself out of my comfort zone constantly. So there's constant self-doubt. There's constant fear. There's constant apprehension of change you know all those things are normal but i think when you're constantly bringing yourself back to who you really are and what it really means to have value in yourself it gets stronger and stronger and stronger especially if you're actively trying to cultivate it so i think it's obvious why this conversation is important but i think what's more interesting is how do we actually get to a point where we think of ourselves as deserving enough or valuable enough to have the things that we want, or that, you know, if you're into manifesting the things that you're trying to attract. So I kind of want to give you a twofold practical approach to this. Now, some of you may have already done this. Some of you, maybe not. If you're trying to have new opportunities and like create change in your life, my question to you is, do you know what life you actually want? What is the life you feel you're deserving of? Or if you're struggling with that element of like, I'm worthy enough for this life. Let's just focus on the ideal life. You know, like what is that gold standard? What is that thing you're working towards? What does that look like? Now, if you don't have clarity in this regard and you want a little bit of a framework to go through, I'm going to link a free 20 minute YouTube video I did, which is basically a, just a workshop that will take you through your ideal balance. And I think you need to do this in tandem with the goals you have. So maybe you've already set some for the year, but it will help you work out what things actually matter to you which in turn paints a picture of the kind of life you want. So you really need to work out, okay, what is this standard that I want? And don't cheat yourself here. Like don't cross out a zero on the amount of money you want to make, or don't just like add on a bit of time because you think that's more realistic. Write down the life that you want, because this is going to help step two, which is ask yourself, once you paint that picture, can you find a reason why you're actually not deserving of that life? Now, just because you haven't done it before, or you don't really know anyone else that's done it, is not a good enough reason. I'm going to tell you that right now from me to you, that's not a good enough reason for you to not be worthy of the life you want, right? I want you to think really critically here. If you've written down something that you feel like is a bit unrealistic or you can't achieve it or whatever, I want you to dig deep here. Why is that the case? Is that a limiting belief you've got? Is that a fear? You know, it will tell you something and that is work that needs to be done. Because ultimately, if we go back to what we, what we kind of opened with, if you don't think you're worthy of that life, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, any limiting belief that's kind of blocking you there, of course that opportunity is not going to present itself. And even if it did, you maybe wouldn't even go for it. So you really need to work on what it is that you want, what kind of things you're trying to attract or create in your life, what kind of life you want for yourself. And then think about your self-worth and what's blocking that. Because once you bring, I kind of see it as like two, like it's like two levels, right? So if you've got the life you want is here and your self-worth is here, once you bring that up and can match it, they're aligned. And when the two are face to face, it's going to be a match because you're going to have the self-worth that means you can embrace that opportunity. Now, just to help you guys with this process, I do want to share four mindset shifts that have been very powerful for me. I guess they're like little lessons I have put under my belt over the years as I've kind of gone through my own challenges and struggles with this topic or area of self-worth. And hopefully they'll help you navigate this situation as well that maybe you find yourself similarly stuck in. Number one is, I think there's this fake idea we have that self-worth or like it's kind of linked to confidence, right? It comes once we have enough examples to show ourselves that we're worthy or that we're confident. But the truth is, it's actually the other way around. The confidence or the worth has to come first and then you have the, I guess, ammo or energy to do those things. So if you're sitting there waiting for enough examples, it's kind of like you're at a crossroads because the examples or the experiences, like it's difficult for them to come and for you to take charge and embrace them if you don't think you're worthy of doing them. So get that out of your head, realize that the self-worth and and the confidence needs to come first. And that is something you can cultivate without the past experiences or the examples you can start working on that now through you know the two-step approach we just went through before it's clearing any of the things that are blocking you from actually 
finding your own true worth. And in our podcast marathon, that free ebook, week two is all about clearing the crap. It's things you're feeling guilty for, reasons why you can't say no or set boundaries, uh, negative people, things like that. So if this is sticking out to you, definitely download that and really focus on that week two piece. Number two, a really powerful mindset shift I had is accepting that I'm in this default state where I'm already worthy. Now, what that means is irrespective of what happens, say you go for a new job, say you apply for something and don't get accepted, right? That doesn't mean you're not worthy because your default state is you're already worthy 100% of the time. What that means when you feel, when you experience that rejection or disappointment is actually just that something else is better or more aligned for you. So this is a reframe and a mindset shift I've had that has helped me really embrace this default state, right? It doesn't matter how much I wanted that house or that job or this trip or whatever it is. If I don't get it, it's because the universe or God or whatever you believe in has something bigger and better lined up for you and it just wasn't meant to be. And you just have to trust and have faith that the things that are meant for you will always find you. And so when you don't get something, it's not an indication on your self-worth because you are 100% of the time by default already worthy. Number three, beautiful mindset shift is if it's on your heart, it's there for a reason. I think sometimes we have these things that we desire and that we want and it kind of feels a bit random, right? Like I'll share one with you guys now. Like I have always seen myself maybe in the future once I have a house and I have a podcast studio in my house so I can do this from home, both the interviews and my solos. I, for some reason, kind of saw, had this idea of potentially having uh, like a part one, which is like me cooking for the guests and just having them as with my family and just like us getting to know them in a really casual way. And then we jump into the podcast room and have a more formal, like sit down strategic kind of conversation, you know, as I do on the show. And this to me was kind of like, it could be a whole two part show. And anyway, it was just like this random idea I had, but I'm just like, if it's on your heart, it's there for a reason. Don't ignore these dreams or these curiosities or these interests you have because you never know why they've been put there but I always think it's for a reason and don't let anyone tell you that your idea is stupid or that you can't do it or it's you know it's never been done before I think if you have an idea or something you really want like don't ignore that if it's on your heart it's for a reason and the fourth mindset shift this is extremely extremely powerful if you want change if you want something different your environment has to support that And when I talk about environment, it's the people around you, it's the space you're in, and it's the general environment or places you you frequently find yourself in, whether that be the workplace, how you commute, communities you spend time in, family households, etc. If these places are not cultivating the energy that you need to do the things you want, it keeps you small. Now, I have to say, moving to Dubai has been incredible for me because this city... And I know people have a lot of opinions about it, but what I will tell you about this city is that if you want to do something, the answer is not, no, you can't do that. It's how do you do it? And that energy is so infectious. People here are open-minded. They're forward thinking. They're in growth mindset. There are a lot of entrepreneurs. And so there's things happening, people doing things that have never been done before. And being around that energy, being around other people that are trying to create a different life for themselves is enabling my reality of trying to do that for myself and so your environment is so important and it might not have to be as drastic as you move overseas but you know now when I go back to Sydney there's a very evident shift or difference in the way people think there and the way that people think here and that's not to say that one is wrong or right it's just to say that at this point in my life with what I want with what I'm trying to create this is a very fertile environment for me to be doing that and so it's thinking about the people you're surrounding yourselves with the conversations you're having Is that supporting the life you want to create? Is it actually the other way? Is it completely blocking it because people are keeping you small or places are keeping you small? You know, really think about this and think about ways you can cultivate your environment to support what you want to do. And again, that comes down to your self-worth too. If you have a rocky self-worth or you don't think you're worthy of doing things and then you have an environment that confirms that, oh yeah, you can't, you know, that's a bit of a big goal or like you're never going to make that much money or you know, that's, that's a bit of a random promotion or what, whatever other people kind of project onto you, then that's going to confirm whatever it is you think about yourself. And then by virtue, you're not going to get those opportunities. You're not going to even seize them when they come up because you don't back yourself. So having people or spaces around you that support you in what you want, where you're going is going to make this process a lot more 
possible. Of course, it's not impossible if you're not in that environment, but where you can take charge and create change and create blooms or, or a fertile garden around where you are, like definitely, definitely do that. Okay, as promised, I have a challenge for you guys. Now, I want you all to revisit the goals that you wrote for yourself at the start of this year. And I want you to critically ask yourself if you are playing safe in writing those down. And then I want you to ask yourself why that might be. Is it because you don't think you're worthy? You know, is it a case where you drop down the amount of money you wanted to make because the first goal was a little bit too high or you thought about it and you didn't write it down or you put down a time deadline or the amount of subscribers you want or followers or uh, hitting certain KPIs at work or exceeding them? You know, like, did you really downplay anything that you wanted for yourself? Because this episode is the perfect time. This is the opportunity for you to revisit it in line with the two-phase exercise, in line with the four mindset shifts and start thinking about if those opportunities or those goals, if momentum towards them has not started, if we haven't started to make progress, can we correlate that to how we view our self-worth? And if so, that's exciting because if we can reverse engineer and start working on our self-worth, we can not only try and start to see those goals coming to fruition or those opportunities starting to present themselves. But maybe we can even take those up a notch. Maybe you can edit those goals and push it because you actually believe you're worthy of more. You're deserving of more. It aligns with the life that you want for yourself. So I really don't want you guys to limit yourself because why would you? It's your life you're trying to create. You have the full power to create whatever life you want and you are worthy of that. You just need to believe it yourself first. So that's my challenge. Go away, have a think about it. This is something really important to work on. But what I can tell you guys is through being thorough and consistent with my own self-value, it is incredible. The opportunities that have presented for me, things I didn't even know I would enjoy, things I didn't even know were possible. You know, people always ask me, oh, how did you get this guest on the show? Or how did you get booked for that event or speaking on stage? Like these things happen when you believe that you are worthy of doing them. It's certainly not luck and it's certainly not a mistake. The opportunities will come and meet you where you're at with yourself. So don't limit yourself and just remember that your default state is that you are always worthy. I hope you guys have loved this episode. This is something, as you can probably tell, I'm very, very passionate about. I see the power in this. I I can see it happening in my own life in real time right now. I can see myself growing and opportunities coming as a direct correlation to the way I view my own self-worth and my own potential. So please don't skip over doing this because I just... I just think it is so, so powerful. So if anyone's come to mind in this episode, you guys know my, I feel like a broken record when I say this, but knowledge is great when we hear it, but it is even better when we share it. And something as powerful as this is truly a gift. That's how I feel. I feel like I have stumbled across this gift of the power of our self-worth and I've seen it operating in my own life. And I just want to give that to you guys. And so you, you guys are now tasked with giving that gift to somebody else that it can also make the biggest difference in their life, whether it's just a simple mindset shift or actually going through and doing the work. So I'll leave that with you guys. That's also your homework for today. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Whatever platform you guys are on, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us reach more people like me and you who would really benefit from the conversations that we're having. And of course, link up with us in our Telegram chat, on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you guys live. I'm active across all the platforms. I'm an online gal, so... I'll see you all next week for another episode and until then stay balanced.